Do superheroes only exist in movies? One look at the Avengers and you might be thinking, it's a shame that superheroes and superpowers only exist in the cinematic world. Or do they? As the age-old saying goes, not all superheroes wear capes, and today's video proves that to be the very truth. Sometimes, it's a time of adversity that unleashes the superpowers within us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at four incredible individuals who gained superpowers. Donna McNamee and Abigail Sicolo lift a car off of a boy. Donna McNamee and Abigail Sicolo are two women that share two things in common. They lived in the same neighbourhood and both are mothers. Perhaps some may say that being a mother is a superpower within itself, but there would be something else in the summer of 2009 that neither of them would expect that would bring out their superpowers within them. It was an average June day. McNamee was busy with her garden, and Sicolo's son Jaden was enjoying a game of playing with water guns with his pal and neighbour, Bailey Fowler. That game would turn unexpectedly sour when young Fowler ran across the road and was hit by a car in the process. Upon hearing screams from the boy, both women rushed to his immediate aid. Upon reaching the scene, they realised that the boy was stuck under the car. Realising there was no time to waste, the women knew there was one thing that needed to be done to lift the 1.1 ton car up to free this boy. Neither of the women had been training for such a heavy feat, but they didn't let that fact faze them. They knew that this was an emergency with little time to act, and the time to act was in that moment without any delay. So they mustered up a strength that they didn't even know they harnessed, and the pair successfully lifted the car off of the boy. This was a defining moment that most likely saved his life. Derek Amato, a sudden musical genius. On one faithful summer day in 2006, Derek Amato did what many of us would do when we see a swimming pool. He jumped in. However, he didn't know that this very moment would change his life forever. The dive resulted in a traumatic head injury that left him with a concussion, but a concussion was not the only thing that he obtained from the injury that day. The injury gave him something that no one would expect not even Amato himself. He acquired a gift, a gift in the form of a set of exquisite skills, the mastery of music. Unbeknown to himself, that was the very moment where Amato would become a musical genius. Prior to hitting his head, Amato had not exhibited any musical finesse. He actually considered himself to be on the average end of the spectrum, as he puts in his own words, I was a regular kid, I played baseball and chased girls like boys do. The same could not be said, however, after returning from the hospital. He rested for five days. On the fifth, he ventured past the piano, which lived in his house as decoration. He decided to hit a few random notes for the fun of it, nothing more. But as it turns out, a lot more would come from those so-called random notes. To his surprise, Amato played out a melody, something he'd never done before. Each note he struck against the keyboard with his fingertips came out precisely in tune with the notes that preceded it. If a composer with a background and expert familiarity in music was around in those initial moments, they would have instantly guessed that Amato had delved years into studying and practicing music, based on the professional level of piano playing he was showing, which was certainly not the case. It all just seemingly came to him without any prior experience. Medical professionals have a term for this kind of scenario. In other words, they seemingly become sudden geniuses in a span of time that seems like it's been overnight. Amato's sudden musical ability was the product of an acquired savant syndrome, a rare condition where someone who suffers an injury acquires some extraordinary set of skills they didn't have prior to their injury. Whereas he once considered himself to be average, he now was the envy of composers and musicians who spent and dedicated years upon years to attain a sliver of the skill that Amato was now displaying. A musician may call what occurred to Amato a dream come true. However, Amato was quick to correct anyone that may be yearning for a similar occurrence. As extraordinary as the gift is, it's not a blessing without a curse. 
Ever since the dive on that otherwise uneventful summer day in 2006, Amato lost 35% of his hearing, experienced some memory loss, and has suffered from light and audio sensitivity, loss of consciousness, and excruciatingly painful headaches. He describes the headaches as being so debilitating in pain at times, it feels too overwhelming to bear. As Amato puts into his own words, I always thought there's nothing in this world that can make you feel like you do not want to be on this earth. Sometimes the headaches are so bad I'm almost begging to just not even be alive to deal with it. It's a humbling reminder that nobody really knows what another person may be going through behind the scenes based on their outward presentations to the world. Edward Moybridge Another example of this same syndrome is in the case of an individual known Edward Moybridge. He was born as Edward Muggeridge, but later changed his name in an effort to tie back to and reclaim and identify with his Anglo-Saxon origins. Rewinding back to the days of black and white photographs in the year of 1860, Moybridge, alongside other passengers, suffered a stagecoach accident. The accident resulted in one fatality, while leaving the remainders of the passengers injured. Moybridge happened to be amongst one of the so-called lucky ones that survived, but he suffered a head injury as a result of the trauma from the accident. Prior, he owned and ran a successful bookstore, with some superficial plans to incorporate photography in the future. The photography plans had never yet come into fruition, nor were they ever solidified. However, after the accident, Moybridge seemed to take on a particular fascination for all things that involved capturing moments in time and motion via photographs. The sudden onset and spark of interest for photography, and not to mention his excelling in precision with it, are very reasons as to why researchers look at Moybridge as an example of someone who experienced acquired savant syndrome. They view his photography skill to have been an ability, a skill triggered and brought to life as a product of the stagecoach crash. One of Moybridge's most notable photography works was through a series of photographs capturing a horse actively galloping. He used a series of cameras to capture every minuscule stride. It may seem insignificant, but this photograph series answered the age-old and mysterious questions of how horses go about galloping exactly whether they lift up all their limbs at once, or if they lift the anterior limbs, followed by the posterior limbs. The series was a product of five years in the making, with the aid of a man named Leland Stanford. Stanford owned and had a passion for horses. He had a hypothesis in mind that proposed that there is a point in time when all of a horse's limbs are above ground at once while galloping. He called on Moybridge to assist him in proving this point, Originally, he thought the idea to be ludicrous, but ended up taking on the challenge. Being a perfectionist, it wasn't until five years later that he was finally satisfied with the photograph's products. Moybridge ran into a couple of roadblocks on the way, some avoidable and others rather technical due to the limited photographic resources at the time. One such avoidable interruption was in 1874, when he allegedly attacked his wife's supposed forbidden lover. After discovering an exchange of hidden letters, Moybridge questioned the legitimacy of his son, whom he previously had been confident was his. Moybridge supposedly decided to take matters into his own hands by allegedly shooting the man whom he suspected his wife's new lover to be. Moybridge ended up going into exile for some time, and was eventually acquitted of the crime, so he was able to return to his project with Stanford. In 1878, Moybridge achieved the motion shots of Stanford's horses. He was able to orchestrate a series of cameras in such a manner, they were able to capture shots that cameras at the time typically took minutes to capture. In Moybridge's case, the 12 photos that made up the infamous series were captured within seconds, which was revolutionary at the time. This very concept set the stage for the production of motion pictures. It also had an effect on the scientific community prompting them to use images as a form of credible data in support of experiments, as well as sparking interest to delve deeper into researching motion in other animals. The series also had a profound effect on the art community, in pointing out errors in horse-themed artwork, and led to more accurate displays in the genre. It's safe to say the series gathered a lot of attention, and notoriety put Moybridge under the spotlight to say the least. So what do you make of these people who gain superpowers, 
Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.